Listeners be advised, the Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not Make sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson, and for you freaky motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. On today's episode, we will be talking about gender, and I'm blessed with a phenomenal woman by the name of Candice. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So this is your first time being introduced to uh, the podcast listeners out there, the fans of the show. Do you mind introducing uh, yourself to them? Let them know a little bit about yourself, some of the things that you do, just so that they can warm up to you before we get into the nitty gritty of gender. Well, um, I'm Candace. Candace, Anthony. I'm hook a whore, prostitute. Let me stop that. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm silly, so that, that you'll hear that all the craziness. Uh, I try to talk, make light of everything, but you know, I'm just a trans woman out here trying to live the good life. Pretty much, I got a lot of stuff that I can't really talk about right now. But maybe when y'all see me again, I can talk about them more about more about my situation right now. Mm. All right. Well, I will say I've been seeing those phenomenal pictures you've been taking. I'm just like, who, who, like, come on now, come through pictures. Who, who, <laughs> who's making these outfits? Are, are you doing these? A lot of times, yes, yes. Okay, bitch, yeah. we, we love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, we were talking a little bit before the episode uh, started off, and Candace just want everybody to know she's your freaky auntie. <laughs> uh, and it, it was a, the uh, name was given to me. I didn't bless my name self with that name. They gave it to me. The young tenders gave it to me. That's <laughs> <laughs> somebody freaking auntie. I was like, well, actually, I am. <laughs> Look, and we love it. We love it. Look, she is the podcast freaky auntie. So if you ever need an uh, auntie, you always got Auntie Candace. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, with that great introduction, let's get into the, the conversation. So um, part of this discussion is uh, we will be talking about gender affirming care later on. So y'all wait for that. But we're going to start off a little bit uh, heavy. Um, and I know, Candice, uh, one of the things that we were talking about um, before is that you've recently lost your mother. And I know exactly how that pain can be. Um, and how how are you moving through that uh, at this moment, as well as what are what is your personal story with your connection with your mother? Most definitely with you being trans women, uh, trans woman, and whatnot. And how uh, has she been there for like support throughout uh, her lifetime? Well, if anyone like knows me, knows me, they they know like my mother was my best friend. Well, she hates when people call their. She always said, "I hate when people call their parents their best friends," but she was my best friend. Like you saw me, you saw her. It could be anywhere. We could be going to rob a bank. She'd be beside me. We could be going to kill somebody. She'd be beside me. So it's like a great loss to me, but I'm trying to work through that and not get too boggled down. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling everyone, they ask, how you doing? I say like, I'm good during the day because I can keep busy and move and do things. But it's at night when I'm thinking about myself that really, really, you know, like kind of gets me down. Because mm -hmm. a lot of lately, I'm um, like, I could be sitting somewhere and then like, Somebody will call out, like, 
one of her favorite movies, and I just probably like bust out crying or something like that, or something to make me think about her. And I lately I've been quoting her like all the time, like me and my best friend uh talk, and we be like, well, you know, I call her Miss Faith because everybody, because she um used to work with disabled people, so they called her Miss Faith. So I called her Miss Faith as well. I like well, as Miss Faith would say, so and so and such and such. <laughs> so, <laughs> have a hearty laugh but yeah it it was now it wasn't always like that because when we were close like that it's because and i say that because um when you have outside influences influencing your relationship with other people and that's what that's what how that was like i was telling someone the other day um i'm not a bad person people think because you are trans or you do this or you do this or you use uh, uh a sex worker or you're a stripper that you they automatically peg you as someone as a bad person. I said they assumed that I was a bad person because I was a trans woman, but and then so they was putting that onto her. So she'll you know she'll put that their assumptions onto me herself until she actually got you know I'm like wait a minute she don't do none of that. I I, I see everything she do like if if I left before her. She would know, like, if somebody came and told her stuff about me, she would know if it was true or not, because she knew, like, what I would and what I wouldn't do. So it was like, it was just like, it was just like, like, here, I, I. Yeah, and I think that's an important thing to mention, because I think a, a lot of people get boggled down in the dra drama that other people bring to them, and um, we don't take a moment to reflect on who is the person that I've always known, and I, I, I get that it can be hard for, like, new relationships and new friendships and stuff like that, but if you've known someone for, at minimum, a year, two years, you get to know their character, you get to know different facets of their life, you get to figure out who they are as a, who they are as an individual versus what other people or coming to tell you like it always confuses me whenever like when you see a movie or a tv show and it's like this new relationship that started up and the i guess the woman in this situation believes her new ass boyfriend and doesn't believe anything that's dealing with the best friend that she's known for 18 fucking years like what what yeah. what the hell <laughs> Yeah, she tried to fuck me, and she said that you were a whore, and she did this, and she said all of this. Wow. How could you dare? I dare you say that. <laughs> How dare you? But for real, like, rather than just acknowledging, this is my child. This is the person but, that I've known. Mm -hmm. to cut you off, but the reason she felt so so strong about it because it was my it was my family that was telling her all. No, oh, you cut off. Can she still there? My phone overheated. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had to come back in. My phone overheated. I guess to say I was getting to the nitty gritty. <laughs> right, right. Well, where it cut off, it was when you said that it was your family um, yeah. who were telling her. Like my aunt, her aunt, my like grandmas and cousins. And just, just, just went on on about just crazy stuff. Or like if I confided in them with about stuff, they would switch it around and then, you know, make her think all kind of, I'm doing all kind of crazy stuff in the street and all that kind of stuff. It'd be your own. What? <laughs> it's like, my thing is, if you have your own personal feelings about whatever the hell I do, keep that. Don't try to ruin the relationship that I have with somebody already. Like, yeah. if, if you don't want me to fuck with you, just say so. And I don't have to fuck with you. Like, it's okay. I understand. We are adults. <laughs> what? And I was, I was, I was the, 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 the I call myself the token gay person back then. Because mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, like the flower child gay person. Like, oh, you need a gay person? Here, there go, there go, <laughs> this, oh, you need another one? There go, Candace. <laughs> so, um, I was always that person. And then my outward appearance was very flamboyant. I was very flamboyant. So it was like, they used that against me as well. Oh, Lordy. Are you still, is, what is your connection like with those family members? Has that improved over time or are they still doing whatever the hell? They're all dead. Oh. <laughs> well, rip. Not to, not to be a laugh about it, but they all dead. Mm, I just say rip. That's, that's the, yeah. <laughs> I don't know them like that, so. <laughs> that was a real, 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 real Southern judgmental type crowd. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
me. I couldn't be myself. I had to hold a lot back back then and, you know, present just like certain image. But see, now I can just, you know, I can wear a, a, a shoe on, on the middle of my forehead and people don't, you know, think they all look, but, you know, it, it doesn't bother people. And uh, I think that's a good thing that that this that is where we are moving towards in a lot of different spaces um, throughout this country. And I know like here in Augusta, things that this is weird, like uh, people ask me to describe Augusta often. And I'm like, it's very conservative, but people also don't care about what you're doing. Like if you're expecting Atlanta vibes, you're not going to get that. <laughs> you're not going to get that at all because people are judgmental as hell here. But you can still be you on some level. Yeah, because I went to a, a prom, a gay prom yesterday, and most of the most of the people there had on prom dresses with beards. Oh. <laughs> so like, okay. That sounds fun. <laughs> 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 and, you know, but then, like, once again, perception, you of uh, once you think somebody looks weird, but, you know, they came and talked to me, and then, you know, they just, like, the down, most down-to-earth people ever. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, a lot more people will be a lot and um, become more open to just letting people be them and just enjoy <laughs> your own life. Friend, I'm gonna talk about her all the time. Shout out to Miss Jazz. We talk. That's my friend of twenty plus years. We were sixteen when we met, and we in our forties now. So, <laughs> shout out to her. So, y'all gonna hear me talk about her a lot. But we talk about that all the time. Like, why do people worry about what the fuck other people mind your fucking business? Exactly. What's going on in my life to be worried about you? And y'all, you do stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, my favorite um, uh, line is, I've I've given you neither a penny, nickel, or dime, so mind the business that pays you because <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> like, oh. Uh, maybe they, they, their, their life ain't that great or interesting to, to, to mind their own business. Mm, they need to make it interesting or some shit like have your own scandal or something like come on now <laughs> so um when it comes to connecting with uh, more people and growing and finding yourself and just having ownership of who you are uh, what was that journey like for you? Did you have to have support uh, from uh, more family as time went on? Um, did you uh, just have to find your circle of friends and grow into yourself that way? It was it was a mix of all of that because you know, like I said, I was raised in the church. When the church doors opened, I was always there. I was always pushed and everything in school, so I was a nerd. I still am a nerd, so. It was always church, school, and then like extracurricular activities and family. So that my whole that was my whole life. So you know, like I enjoyed it. I know then you know then I started seeing like, oh, I could be this, I could do this, I could. So I was starting to open up and see all that. But so I did have support, and then that's the funny thing about it. Growing up and like as a child, a feminine child, then growing into that. Mm-hmm. I was always feminine, but once I started to make those changes, that's when the the whole all of that mess came in. And then we all, they all, my all my family members had gay people in their lives, trans people, gay people, studs, lesbians, everything. We got, I have all of that in my family, but it was like I was the 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 the, the, the bullseye. I didn't get it. You know, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because that, that triggered a memory because, like, <laughs> even in my family, I've known about uh, people who are trans since I was a young of a young age. Like, one of my mom's friends, I don't know how long they've been friends or whatever, but her she goes by Al, and her name is Alfreda, and she lives oh. in um, um, Baxley, Georgia, and she's, hey. like, hilarious. <laughs> and um, then... She also had a gay friend. His name is Biz. And I'm like, why is it that y'all associate with all these queer people, but when it hits home, now we have an issue. Like, now we want to act like we don't know. Like, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, 
you were around those people, if you were around those people, and you like, of course, you're gonna get influenced. All that if you you can uh, identify with them if you do become whatever a gay, a trans, or whatever, you can identify with those people. And then like I was talking to my cousin recently, and she was saying about her mother. She was like, "Yeah, my mother, she had gay friends." The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. I was talking to my cousin recently and she was saying about her mother. She was like, yeah, my mother, she had gay friends. She said they were trans, but you know, back then they didn't know, really know what trans was. She said, <laughs> she said she called them psychedelic punks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, that needs to be, oh, that needs to be a thing. <laughs> Episode title. <laughs> Uh, back, uh, oh, back then it was the, like the flashy little uh shirts and stuff. Maybe it was that or something. I don't know why she called them psychedelic. <laughs> look, can this? I need that to be a movement because look, fuck it. There's no trans people. There's just psychedelic punks. That that, that <laughs> like uh, just imagine. Oh yeah, um, I my best friend is a psychedelic punk. What? <laughs> I would love to meet them. What the hell is that? <laughs> and, I, and that's what. Back then, like when you had a gay friend, that's what it was like. Oh, you, we got to meet them. We just, oh, they do hair, they do this, they do. It was, it was just like the the, the pinnacle. <laughs> and that that brings me to some shade. This is also the reason why I just don't be fucking around with Tyler Perry because every time I think about, uh, well, whenever I watch this play and um, it was Aunt Bam. Um, saying, "Oh yeah, I'm not uh, afraid of gays. We love the gays and all this other stuff. I love them because they can um, do great hair, a few um, floral arrangements, and all this other stuff." But I'm like, "That's great and all that you like queer people for the things that they can do and the creativity that many of us po- um, possess." But at the same time, you don't like us. <laughs> like, uh, let's be real <laughs> like it's not the skills that we provide we're still human love us for who we are yeah but then we're like they are uh, going deeper in like they saying they're saying that on the surface but a lot of time they mean it like it's for like it's confidants you know mm. you there to give them advice and uh, a shoulder to cry on and all that kind of stuff because i have a lot of come to me well shit i could be sitting in the, in the doctor's office or something then somebody just came, hey, how you doing? You know, my husband just got ran over today. And then they just thought, and I'm like, uh-huh. oh, then I have to, then I have to be their counselor. Look, when, that look, feel. <laughs> right. I, I'm going to start, every time a stranger walks up to me for that kind of mess, I'm just going to start charging them. I'm like, hello, hold up, hold up, hold up. You, you're getting too deep? And you, we need to start talking about rates now because, fam, you just walked over here and interrupted my day to give me some sad yeah. shit. We need to get some payment going yeah. on. <laughs> Do you have PayPal? Do you have uh, Cash App? Do you have Venmo, bitch? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, 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 yeah. All of it. Give me me. I need me. <laughs> exactly. Because we, 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 time is money at this point because you, you talk about your husband just died. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> we need to, we need to pay for this depression yeah. that you just put me in. <laughs> he didn't die. He just got ran over. <laughs> true, 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 true. <laughs> but yeah, he came up to me and tell me the, the, the most, like, not, I'm going off a subject. Like yesterday at the prom, I went by myself. Because my, you know, like I was saying, my mother went with me last year, so she always go 
everyone with me. So I was by myself. I mean, I don't mind being by myself, but maybe I looked lonely or something. So I was just in the back chilling. And uh, some uh, it was a group of white people. They were playing darts. They were throwing the darts and stuff. And I was just minding my business. And the guy, I know he was trying to push up on me or whatever, but his wife or girlfriend was right there. So he was like, you want to take my turn? You know how to play darts? I'm like, I haven't played them since a child, but okay. And so he was explaining the game or whatever. And so we, I started, I took his turn, like, to the end of the game. And so the wife was, came over, the wife or girlfriend, I don't know, his significant other, I don't know. And she was like, yes, I was just telling the girl over there about this sex toy right here. And he was like, yeah, that's why I don't get sex a lot. And she showed me, it's like a duck. It's like, it looks like a duck. Oh. What is, I don't know what it is. I'm about to start searching on Google. <laughs> <laughs> called the duck she called it the duck and then she went into like this whole description like she was selling it i'm like you should call that the people and and endorse them or let them endorse you she was like yeah i you did this suction right here you turn it on it's water friendly and you you put it on your clit and it sucks the clit. I was like, oh, that looked like it hurt she's like no it feels amazing oh my gosh and she just kept going on and on about and i'm looking like she know we just met, and she knows she talk about her sex life and her man right here. And she's like, "Yeah, don't tell. I I can't tell." And she whispered in my ear, said, "Um, I be in the shower. I use it at least three times a week." I'm like, "What? Why did she tell me?" And it don't even. I said, "She said, and you know, it lasts a long time. The battery is it, it lasts three months." I was like, "Shit, it should. You talking about it? Don't take back." I say. It should take about 30 seconds. Like, yeah, when I put it on, I'm out in like 10 seconds. Like, I get the best orgasm. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> wow. It's not this, is it? Yeah, uh, well, it don't it don't have a the the, the mouth is open. Uh, it's like a like Oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh I, if I if I find oh, it. You about to do the little sexy sex toy review thing, aren't you? Uh-huh. You about to start. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, so yeah, I might need to add that to my uh, repertoire. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Not, they don't have the eyes or nothing, but it just have like the the like the duck, but it's open. The mouth is kind of like open, and it's it's that bright yellow. Mm, 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 mm. You know, I feel like uh, I, it, it it seems as though they were trying to like recruit you in for a threesome or yeah. something because. <laughs> That. I told her that since she real green about stuff like that, she don't she don't believe me. Like people do stuff like that. I say they were trying to get me to join in with them. And I was like, they like people like stuff like like freak freak shit like me, like like me, like a me type of person. They like the and I'm black and big too. Mm-hmm. Oh, rub all up on you, like oh, is this treating you well? Oh, oh my, yeah. Mm-hmm. They they wanted them some you last night. <laughs> yeah, so the headphones was, that's what they wanted because I guess they, I don't know, but then I think they went somewhere else. But I, I they was like because he kept was adamant. You want to? You don't want to mingle? You want to go out? No, I'm fine right here. I'm fine. Let me just enjoy myself right here. Mm-mm-mm-mm. But he was a nice looking. Asked me about where I went to school and all I did. I'm like, yes, that right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you found it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I put that in the show notes for y'all people. <laughs> so you get your little ducky. <laughs> what is it called? What's it called? So, um, well, this is one of those um, toys that isn't a brand name. Um, you can get it off of Alibaba. <clears throat> so if, for anybody who doesn't know, if you want to get cheap sex toys and like start to sell them, you go to a website called Alibaba. Don't ask me how I know. I just be knowing these things. And it's um, called, you can uh, search <clears throat> cute. Suck, oh, sorry, cute duck sucking vibrator sex toy for women or duck clitoral sucking vibrator, and it'll pull right on up. Mm-hmm. I, so, I, I never seen it because I don't, I'm not a sex toy person. I'm, I, I, I'm normally just a sex toy, I'm the, the big old human sex toy, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't get into all of that. <laughs> Look, if you ever need like some recommendations, let me know because I be knowing shit. 
Look, I did a um, review yesterday for one of my uh, my little faves. It's this little baby here. So um, it's it's a it's a let's see. So this is what it does. Yeah. So it's like for the clitoris, but I use it for like nipple play. Oh, but so you have sensitive nipples? Mm hmm Oh, mine ain't that way. They you have to kind of clamp on like a dog. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Bite those muscles. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, they they definitely wanted them a piece of chocolate candy last night. <laughs> and I just said something like that too. Like, oh, you child, you're tall and chocolate candy, something like that. Okay. Oh. Awkward. <laughs> Cause see, I try to separate like, cause I, I'm a sexual person, so I try to separate the sexual side from you know just the regular side. And a lot of times, kind of like, cause a lot of people like, I can see it in your eyes, like how you like look or how you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I like. I just be looking on. <laughs> exactly. It's like I. I guess. I guess you just the aura that you have is just like, oh fuck me. <laughs> yeah. I have. I also have. Um, this another uh a recommendation you can um shout out. It's um pheromones spray, like a perfume. It's like if I'm in, I'm going into like a, a crowd of like like a concert or a boxing match, I will wear it, and it, it like kind of like like get people like you know got turned on in a sense. Because oh. I was I was recently I was in a um a boxing match. And I, the guy, it was a white guy. And I don't know why I get sit by the white people all the time. It was a, <laughs> man, he was, they were older and a white woman. He sat next to me. And so I had sprayed it on heavy that night. <laughs> and so I was sitting there. He was talking at first. Day. He was like, I guess he got started feeling weird and stuff. And he was like, he was like looking around and like, he, he couldn't, like, he was talking at first. And he just abruptly just stopped talking to me all together. And I was like, oh, okay. Then so he they got up and left. Then he switched seats with her. And then so she started talking to me. And then they all of a sudden just started making out, just like hardcore making out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You you was giving them unicorn vibes that night. They were just like, you know what? We need to show show her that we love each other and we're sexual with each other. And hopefully that turns her on a little bit so that once we ask, you want to join. <laughs> you sitting there, you sitting there like at a restaurant, and they just go at it. They don't turn you on. That's like, why are you doing that in public like that? Tongue and all, tongue and put your. Head. I I was in a restaurant waiting outside to be um sitting sitting down, and the man started kissing the lady, putting his hands all in her shirt and her clothes. I'm like. Oh my God! <laughs> Is this a porno show? I, I'm not I'm watching. <laughs> like I'm okay with like some mild public displays of affection, but if we, when you start doing some deep petting, I'm just like it's time for me to go because I did not come here to watch y'all fucking. I'm not trying to participate in y'all yeah. fucking. I'm okay over here. And I was telling my friend that she was like you for I said like, yes. I said well if if they know what well, they looking for me, I'm just trying to eat, but they know where to find me. They know exactly. <laughs> I mean, if they're looking for all of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to get me some of that pheromone. If I could get people out here acting up too, I might as well. Yeah. Might but it's well. it, it, it's uh, caution. It's, it's gonna be crazy. You're gonna get them crazy vibes and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're right. Mm. So <laughs> go around the right people. <laughs> Because I'm not trying to be in a moment where, yeah, some people just start really fucking in front of me, and, like deep, like petting and all. No, nah, I'm uncomfortable at this point. We're in public. Like, I, I'm here for like um, discreet public play. Like, somebody has on some um, panties or have a toy uh, in them or something like that. And we're just playing through the Bluetooth and shit like that. Yes, I'm all here for that. What happened to Footsie? Under the table. Right, right. <laughs> like, can we bring those things back? <laughs> the the lustful looks in the eye, like, I'm going to fuck you up when we get home. Mm. We, house, when I, we get to the car or either in the bathroom. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. <laughs> we support. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, to get back 
to the topic. So <laughs> Yeah, we, we sure did go far off. We went way, way off. People are just gonna be like, where where is the discussion going here? And look, you learn that it ends up to pheromones and people doing deep petting and fucking on the on the um, table. So there you go. Happy yeah. birthday. <laughs> So uh, another thing that we were going to talk about is gender affirming care. And I know for the general person who may look at like Fox News or even just most most media do not understand exactly what gender affirming care is. Um, And it looks completely different for every single person. It looks different for trans people. It looks different for cis people because guess what? Cis people receive gender affirming care. Hair plugs. Gen- gender affirming care. Viagra, the Viagra, gender affirming care. Getting a boost, uh, uh, getting your breast lifted, gender affirming care. Getting some weight um, taken out, depending on how the person is, if it helps them feel more manly, helps them feel more womenly, gender affirming care is everywhere. So, what was that like for you in the process of uh, having your gender affirmed as well as receiving gender affirming care? Well, I, I, like I was saying earlier, I'm an older girl. So, you know, it, everything was either, and especially in the South, they weren't doing it or uh, you had to pay like so much money. Mm-hmm. So I had to do the, the online route where I um where I would buy off online and then, you know, they ship the hormones and stuff to me and I would take them that, that way. Even that's quite dangerous because, you know, you need uh the blood, um, uh, you know, the what blood I'm, test and whatnot. <clears throat> You need all of that and stuff. So I don't, I don't, but I don't even know if they do that anymore because there's so many programs you can get on and all that kind of stuff that, you know, free program. Mm -hmm. So here in Augusta, I'm under the care of the equality clinic. Um, Have you heard of the equality clinic? I, I have not. Um, Is that, I I know uh, AU has something that they do. That's, that's the equality clinic. Oh, (laughs) so yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've heard about them. Yeah. And it's a free clinic. Everything is free. The test, the the prescriptions, seeing the doctor. They have behavioral uh, uh, science people. They have, you know, people with help with your general care, like your teeth and your inside of your body, like all of that kind of stuff. It's free. So, like, I think we're like one of the major. And I, I find that odd, though. Like, people will come from Atlanta, they'll come from Florida, they'll come from Charleston, they're coming out for for this program. So I'm like, they don't have those type programs in those places? Well, you have to think about it. MCG, well, AU is that bitch in Georgia <laughs> when it comes to healthcare. Um, like, that's one of the things I love being here. Like, Augusta is the place to be if you have any kind of uh, ailments. We have the number one, uh, I don't know if it's in the country, but at least in the state, number one burn center. Um, uh, what else? The um, um, For stroke. Uh, we have that here as well. Then we have the number one medical school too in the state of Georgia. It was at one point the only two, but you know, but <laughs> because we have all of that, they have a lot more leeway to do a lot more things in other places. Like if you go to Atlanta, um, Grady and uh, even Emory, they're more focusing from what I've um, experienced, well, not experienced, but seen is that they more, more so focus on like uh, traumas be it accidents or surgeries and stuff like that and they don't have anything any people who actually specialize in different types of care like you will find like at a institution like au yeah so so we're we're in that city that that bitch is in (laughs) (laughs) i love that bitch i love that bitch in the au (laughs) <laughs> Look, listen, <laughs> I be feeling spoiled sometimes. <laughs> and she keeps me right, so I, I, I love her. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so if you if you need a place to come, anybody out there, tr- feel free to come to Augusta. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to plug the uh, quality clinic. Everything is free. Uh, it's quality clinic. You have to, I think it's every, don't give me the line, every second Wednesday of the month but you have to schedule an appointment you can't just walk in and you can go online on Facebook on the Equality Clinic uh, website not website on the web Facebook page and you know you can sign up there as well and I mean great care 
you know, like a lot of trans people are fearful going to doctors because you know, like they'll call you by your given name. They call they'll call you by what name you can you can tell them your name is Boo Boo the Fool. They'll call you Boo Boo the Fool. And they you know, they're really, really, really how can I say it? They're really thorough and they're really patient. They have empathy. And you know, they, they're not like those stern doctors. Mm. That they're not, okay, you're not a number. You're not, okay, you need this. this, this. They, they listen to what you have to say. They re- re- recommend stuff and all that kind of stuff. They're not like, wait, we're going to give you this. You're going to get this. You're just, you can't do this. can't do this. But you know that if you want this, they're going to get you to where you need to be. Mm. And um, I will say, yeah, that that is one thing I like. Because I, I had, um, I think I utilized the quality clinic once when I went there. Because um, I was uh, planning on using AU as my PCP area. So it's so much easier because, look, I trust them. <laughs> um, I, like, trust me, I trust AU of any other places here in um, Augusta. So, um and even when I went there, they um, they were very kind. They were understanding. Um, they talked to you like you were actually human. The doctors that I was uh, seeing um, was willing to stay a little bit longer if needed be to have any discussion about any of the medication or anything that I had questions about. And then on top of that, because uh, it is a teaching hospital, they're often under other doctors the doctor that was over them, the team that I was seeing, even reached out to me to have conversations about stuff before moving forward. And all of this was just so I can get on a, a recently approved drug <laughs> so for uh, for PrEP. So I was like, oh, well, like they went above and beyond just to have these conversations with me and uh, let me know of any risk or anything like that, any discomfort that I may uh, experience. Even the pharmacists who I need to um, call tomorrow, but <laughs> the, even those conversations so, are great. Been on prep yet? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm on uh, Apertu, uh, or also known as uh, cabotegravir or something like that um that's the one that i'm on um because i don't like hmm? how long have you been on it i had my i think my second injection um a week ago two weeks ago on the 19th no 21st yeah I, um, have, have going for you. it's been going well like i've tried the pill but i don't like to like take pills every day so i knew that i was not going to be on that um very long and i um the shot it's mild discomfort uh i only have to go there um uh, once every two months or every three months or so just to get my next injection um they make sure that i get tested regularly um uh, and Part of the process of uh, having the injections is that you have to have a negative uh, result to stay on. So um, they make sure I have my HIV uh, AIDS um, test in order for me to continue to receive injections. And that's part of what I have to like plan tomorrow. So it's actually been going very well. No um, side effects or anything like that. Um, there is like 24 hours after you get your shot. There is a little bit of uh, soreness because it is a booster shot, but it's not. It's not too bad. Yeah. yeah for I'm any looking- yuck, I, I agree. If if uh, for any person who does not want to take pills on a daily basis, look into it. Uh, it will require um, prior authorization. Uh, so if you do have health insurance, that would be great. Um, but I think they have other plans as well for those who do not. Um, it is going to require uh, copay assistance, but that copay assistance is uh, ran through the company that offers um, who created or made um, Apertude. So you'll have you'll have the resources. So worth okay. <laughs> But yeah. So, you ready for a little Never Have I Ever? Yes. You have to explain it. So, yes. pretty much in this segment, I'll, I'll just ask you uh, a statement. Uh, never Have I Ever. If you've done it, you say yes or no. We can talk about it a little bit. Uh, I also have Would You Rather? Um, and then I have sex questions, too. If you want, we could do all three. I'm a gambler. Well, no, I'm not really, but I'm a, <laughs> I'm a open book, so we can do all three. All right, let's go. So, um, first one, never have I ever made out with a complete stranger. 
<laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> did that last night. <laughs> I did that uh, at three o'clock. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, you know, so I had a, a recent hook. I don't really kiss a lot of people, but if I do end up kissing somebody i'm a firm believer if you've been drinking something weird at least brush your teeth because i don't know what you've been drinking on like some somebody like, like, that, like somebody uh, but to, we was talking about how in the fuck you gonna go to somebody's house and you gonna ask for head and you ain't wash yourself and that, you think really that and, uh, they sit in your bed and then they leave that that, that rust spot down there the fuck Oh, oh, you need to go like wash yeah. <laughs> like there, this dude like just I guess they thought it would be passionate and they decided to like kiss me with tongue and everything and I tasted their th- tongue and I was like oh, what the fuck did you drink like what was in that it's, it tastes like you've been licking earwax kabuki. oh <laughs> was it uh Fermented cabbage? Was it, what, what? it was something. It, I was not. I was not. Mm-mm. I, <laughs> I never like moved my head back from a kiss so fast. <laughs> I was like, we not. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Like, what, what, what would you drink? What, 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 what's going on? Right? Like, you okay? Are you going through some things? Like, we, mm, mm-mm. I'm not going to say we could talk about it because uh, uh-uh. you're not paying me to be a therapist. So <laughs> we, we not. <laughs> <laughs> oh so this one is a would you rather so would you rather oh. watch a girl on girl porn video or uh watch guy on guy guy on guy why not girl on girl you don't like the lesbian the girls i've been in the situation with girls like i've been in the 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 the, the polyamorous i'm not i'm not in into the polyam but they into me so you know mm-hmm. we we you're intermingled. Uh, huh? I yeah, see y'all intermingled. <laughs> like last uh last night with that couple. <laughs> <laughs> now we actually did the do. We Wait. we actually did the do the do the do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thong, 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 thong. <laughs> like I so I've uh, I've seen people are into that now, the whole polyamorous stuff. Yeah, I it's it's big in Augusta. It's huge in Augusta. Yeah, I, I'm all for it. My only thing is I need for the couple to actually like each other and also be willing to communicate because there's been a, quite a few people who will be like, oh, we're looking for someone that uh, we can um, engage with on a regular basis. I'm like, I'm open to that because look, I'm not trying to continuously find multiple people to hook up with because I don't have the time. <laughs> I, I have the time, but I'm not going to use up my time that way. That's tricky. That's tricky as hell. Because I had to be a counselor to a guy about that. He brought, well, he was dealing with a girl. Mm-hmm. He was with the girl. They was about to get married or something. He was dealing with the girl and it come to find out the other girl found out about her. She came to her his house and confronted the girl, and they all ended up being in 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 this three way love affair. Oh, child, so, sound like that dick was good. It, and, and he had issues. <laughs> he had issues. he was like he don't even like pussy no more. So that's why he was even with me. <laughs> so I was like, what, is, what? You got too much going on. So he brought the girl in with them. The girl turned the other girl out. She liked her over her more. So he started giving her access to them, like taking her out, taking her shopping, going to concerts. So she felt like she was a part of their family. So she started just nutting up, doing crazy stuff, trying to kill herself, trying to kill them, showing up at the house, all kind of stuff. Just all kind of stuff. I said, you, you, you started wrong. You have to leave it in the bedroom. He said, I'm just trying to be nice. You can't be nice to everybody. You can't. <laughs> you can't. You can't nice to everybody. What the utmost fuck? I, I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said, if you could like y'all could have had drinks or something, but you, you, you don't take her out of out of town with your girlfriend and give her the same thing you give the girlfriend, of course she gonna feel like she in a relationship. 
Mm-hmm. See, yeah, <laughs> you like, can't be doing you, stuff like that. You wrong. Dad, what dad, you did that wrong. You got to treat a hoe like a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. I, I agree. Look, if if I'm in this to be in, uh like, just for the sex, and we've communicated that, it's going to be just for the sex. If I um come into the relationship that y'all have, and y'all start treating me like another part of that relationship, we have to have, sit down and have a conversation, because are, are y'all trying to say that I'm a part of this or not? Nah? Because, um... Don't look, we're not going to do but this. What, is my rent going to be covered? <laughs> yes, he already he just got caught up because the girl confronted the, his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He just got caught up. <laughs> Child. Oh and then I don't know what would happen if he opened that other can of worms that he liked trans women. I don't even know what that'll be like. Girl, you would have been living rent free. A sheet, except yeah. that I, I, a lot of that drama. <laughs> People with one eye open, like <laughs> nobody don't come try to slight my neck. <laughs> Listen, because if you over here going through all these emotions, talking about you about to kill yourself and everything, it's time for me to move the fuck out. Um, I, I'm in a toxic environment. I can no longer be here. I'm sorry. I'm. Um, you are no longer employed here. You know what? I quit. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate the time in this business. <laughs> all of that. <laughs> so here I second, hmm? I second that emotion <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> so here is the sex question so have you ever been to a swingers party did you participate or just watch uh, how did that make you feel and if you haven't uh, participated in a swingers party are you interested in doing so I've been invited several 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 times but I, I won't I don't think I will I, I what I say I will I I wouldn't just like the all out free for all I wouldn't do that but if we if like we go back in in a couple of us a few of us in behind closed doors we can get mm -hmm. it popping. Mm. I have a thing about pub like that whole public mm -hmm. rendezvous type stuff because um when I was younger <laughs> I was tell the story when I was younger I was at a friend's house and we was it was about eight or nine of us in the house and a guy came and knocked on the door and it was a it was a a, a, a guy that that messed around so he came in now imagine we all laughing talking it's like a party well it wasn't an official party but we just friends hanging around he came in my friend went into the the room with this guy they closed the door once the, they closed the door all you hear was sucking and stuff so i'm like <laughs> but i'm like why would you do that and if like Eight people in the room can hear what y'all doing, and it's just like you don't think nothing of that. Mm, so true. that's cool. I like that. I find that like like, and then it wasn't no like no no no. It wasn't no like no soft sucking. It was like a a broken Hoover. Hoover. <laughs> that <laughs> all of that. Uh, just going <laughs> at it. Just going. At it. I'm like and that just scarred me. I can't stand to hear nobody sucking nothing. <laughs> mm, I get it. They said to hear a baby suck. I was like, that, <laughs> that, that scarred the hell out of me. Oh God! I, 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 to do that, like why? Like I'm all for like going. I haven't been to one yet. But I'm definitely open to going to like a play party, a swingers party, and all that other stuff. Um, but I wouldn't. I don't understand why people do stuff like that either. <laughs> Go to the official one. Don't go to the because a lot of those are setups or mm -hmm. people getting set up in those like those house ones. Mm -hmm. A couple of people because I know somebody that just so I think it was in Atlanta. They said the um the guy uh had like a little party and a guy came in with a man say I'm a I'm a shoot y'all sisters up give me up give me the money or something and uh he he was actually shooting this stuff. Oh my. Yeah, so I say go to like uh, official, official, official one, like at, at like the trapeze or the Tokyo. I've mm -hmm. been to Tokyo Vanity, but I once again I was scarred, so I didn't want to go <laughs> in. And so I'm seeing people coming in. Like I'm, st my friends went inside, but I didn't because I was scared. I I didn't know what it was gonna be. So um, and I didn't want to pay. I'm like, why am I going to pay the seat? I don't want. That's not my thing. 
So I was uh, sitting in the car, and of course, who who done died? The police out there. Ooh. But uh, I hear him so too. It, I'm sitting in the car, and all I see is people like jumping out of different cars, and like the car just like rocking, and people going in. They they out briskly walking with the hoods up and they the, the eyes covered. I'm like, is it that serious? <laughs> right, that's the thing. <laughs> Keep going, y'all going in for the same thing. What's what's the the the, the shame, uh, the, the the hiding up? We know why you're here. We know why you're here. like. It's, it's it's. I would not understand why people continuously will allow other people to rule their lives. Like there's somebody who uh, lives like down the street, uh, and they've been saying that they wanted to like uh, come over and hook up with me and all this other stuff. And then they always have excuses of why they can't do it, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, whatever, fam. I'm continuously living my life and not caring. And we were talking about... <clears throat> How he was like, yeah, uh, he feels like his homeboy or something like that will uh, has like ops everywhere who will just like feed some information, this, that, and the third. I'm like, what? OK, first and foremost, if that's what you're saying, a friend would do, they're not your friend, too. Why do you think that your friend knows everybody? Like, if you're saying this, this person is that deep into drama, nobody who's deep into drama looks at reality. They're too focused on Facebook drama to, like, pick up anything. So if you're not doing anything that's on Facebook, they won't know what the fuck you're doing. So what? You that, you that concern. Why are you trying to do all of that anyway? If, if, if it's, like... Right. Uh, it got to a point where I was like, well, I hope one day that you can learn to like just be happy and find ownership in yourself and just be like, not care what other people say. It's a very comfortable place to be. And then, and, and you can move a certain way. I do it all day, every day. You can move a certain way without people being in your business. Exactly. You put people in your business. Like, you I... I have a whole ass sex podcast where I talk about my sexual experiences, but people still don't know who the fuck I be fucking and still don't know if I'm out actually out here fucking or not because I'm not. I'm a virgin. Y'all shut the fuck up. So <laughs> I just talk about sex. I just like to talk about it. <laughs> Look, that's about it. That's about it. Like my <laughs> my grandma told me recently, I, this shot the hell out of me. She's like, oh yeah, sometimes I try to listen to the uh, his show, but he just go all out there. Now I have to turn it off. And I was like, grandma, why are you listening to me? This, you are too young to be listening to my podcast, woman. <laughs> like, <laughs> but at, at least you support. Right. <laughs> I was like, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> we are not. But like those things, it's just something about being your authentic self that you just stop caring. And if anything does come up, you can have those conversations. How old is he? Oh, I think 29, actually 31. He he, he, he ain't going to get it till much later. Because yeah. like, I don't give a fuck about it. what nobody say, how they feel. I'm just going to do me. Mm. It's simple. simple. I, live, I live for people. I live and I was miserable. Now I'm happy just just being myself. Uh, my, so every I'm telling you, just live your for yourself. Don't live for nobody else. Because if you wake up, or if you don't wake up, who who you have to blame? But yourself, mm -hmm. your authentic self. Uh, oh, I hope I hope more people are able to do that in life. Like it, it's it's. It is a relief not having to care what other people think about whatever the hell I'm doing out here. Because at the end of the day, it's none of their business. It's your business and your business alone. And who you decide to share your business with is who you decide to share with. If people are out here gossiping on your name, let them gossip. If they're not brave enough to come to you with the stuff that they heard on the street, then let them continue to do whatever the fuck they want to do in the background. Because they can ha at the end of the day, they got your, um, your, mouth, your name on their tongue. Not the other way yeah. around. You're doing times 10. Look. They do all of that, what you're doing times 10. Mm -hmm. And look, if they got the, your name on their mouth, ask them, do they want your dick or your pussy or your ass on their tongue too? Like, <laughs> mine as well. <laughs> you want to keep sex toy ducky, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, the close is out. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience before I end this, end this show? Yes, uh, 
I like to say that um, even though we we've been on on eight around the world in, in one day, <laughs> <laughs> I say like make sure you have a relationship with your somebody in your family. So I, I say somebody. Uh, 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 not, I won't say uh, well, well, you could talk about things and stuff because I mean you never know like when they'll leave or when you will leave or whatever. Just but just have try to have like healthy relationship and. Because a lot of stuff it stems from what how you were brought up. Because I, you know, I was just living life, and then and then thinking about like what I've been through was affecting what what my present. Mm. So a lot of the the trauma and the hurt and all that it stems from your uh, upbringing. So try to try to um, have relationships with those people, and you know, kind of like mend fences and not hold grudges, and because you know, life is short. Mm. Life is very very short. I'm a testament of that. But uh, so that's what I would like to leave with everyone. Well, hey, I appreciate you so much. I thank you for so much for coming on the po- uh, podcast, Candice. Um, to the audience out there, thank y'all so much for listening to the Holy Liquid Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. And just in case no one else told you this today, you are beautiful, you are worthy of happiness and joy, you are enough and then some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.